أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكمل العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون رب شحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل نعطة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته what I'm going to try to do, inshallah, is over the next few nights, just give you uh, short reminders from the ayah of Ramadan. There's only one ayah of the Qur'an that explicitly mentions the month of Ramadan, and that belongs to Surah Al-Baqarah, and it's a rather long ayah. It has many phrases in it. So each phrase has some lessons to teach us, and I'll try to highlight some of them in these short reminders over the next few nights, inshallah, just to get us in the, into gear for what's coming, inshallah. Ta'ala. May Allah accept the coming Ramadan for all of us and have us reach it and have us make the most of it. So we open with uh, this first phrase, Shahru Ramadan الذي أنزل فيه القرآن The month of Ramadan, commonly translated, the month of the Qur'an is the one in which the Qur'an was revealed. Uh, the first thing I'd like to highlight from a language point of view is the Arabs say the best way to say something is to use the least amount of words. So خَيْرُ الْكَلَامْ مَا قَلَّ وَدَلَّ The best way to get a point across is use the least amount of words. But this is actually more wordy than the least amount of words. If you said, أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِي شَهْرِ رمضان القرآن or أنزل الله القرآن في شهر رمضان Much less words gets the point across But Allah said شهر رمضان الذي أنزل في القرآن He elaborated it Now what, what difference does that make? The first thing that it does is that the subject of the ayah the, the point and the purpose of the ayah is the first wording of the ayah And that is the month of Ramadan So this ayah, the topic of it, the subject matter of it Is not revelation The, the subject matter of it is not fasting The subject matter of it is the month of Ramadan that's the first thing. The second interesting thing is that Allah has referred to the time of revelation before. Allah has told us, "Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr, inna anzalnahu fi laylatil mubarakatin, inna kunna mundirin." We sent it in a blessed night. We sent it in the night of power. So Allah has referred to the time when Quran came down before, but He never specified the month. He said the night of power, the night of you know uh, the, the the blessed night or a blessed night, but it kind of remained a mystery. <laughs> Until Allah solved that mystery, where does that blessed night lie? He says the month of Ramadan is in fact the one in which the Qur'an was revealed. The, the words fihi for grammar students is actually muqaddam. What that means is especially and particularly in this month, highlighting the role and the importance of this month. Now just a few interesting things. The word Ramadan comes from Ramad, which is extreme heat. So Ramadan is actually mubalagha of the month of extreme heat. So <laughs> Allah chose... This, and, and you know when ex there's extreme heat, then the people are desperate and they're burning. And they're hoping for rain to come, relief to come. And it's actually that kind of an imagery, beautifully, about the month of Ramadan. This is a month of extreme heat, extreme discomfort, and Allah sent relief for humanity. He sent, just like He sends rain when it's really hot, He sent the Qur'an, you know, in, in that time. So it's actually this really beautiful imagery captured even from the name of the month of Ramadan. The other remarkable thing is, you know, this season for the Arabs was called this because it's the toughest time of the year, right? And Allah decided that He's going to make the month of Ramadan, and later on in the phrases we're going to see fasting. A lot of people get scared of fasting, right? That it's going to be hot, how am I going to do it? And for the Arabs, when the Arabs consider something hot, it must be really hot. Because <laughs> hot is their normal. So when they say it's extremely hot, then that's just, you know, insanely hot. And then that's the... And yet Allah chose that month for fasting. It's almost as though He chose the hardest possible month for the month of fasting. But we'll get to that mystery in, in, a, in a couple of nights, inshallah. What I wanted to highlight today is Allah says that the first thing and the most important thing you need to know about this month is that Qur'an came down in this month. <clears throat> this month is important because this is the month that Allah gave relief to all of humanity that Allah Azza wa Jal decided to speak to them for one last time directly to all of us. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal gives us guidance in our personal lives. But this is one message that is relevant to every single human being directly from Allah 
from now until the last human being that walks on this earth. And he decided that that conversation from Allah, that final conversation from Allah, that should be recited and heard over and over again, should be sent down in this month. What does that tell you and me? That tells you and me that this is the month to connect with the Qur'an. This is the month to have a real relationship with the Qur'an, a real conversation with Allah after hearing what He has to say to us. What he's gonna have, what, what he's gonna tell us. The word Quran, as opposed to kitab, kitab means book. Quran actually means recital, or something that is read out loud. And so the idea in it is that this is the month in which we we should be gearing up to hear what Allah has to say and to prepare ourselves. You know, especially the other important thing, a mindset thing. You know, Quran is sitting on our shelf, and Quran sitting in your home, and Quran's on your apps now. Right? It's accessible. You can just, and you've memorized it. But we lose sight of the fact that what we have access to, I just recited these words, I opened this page and I recited these words, that what we have access to isn't something we're privileged to have. This came down from a very long distance so you and I could have access to it. And we were privileged to have this access in this month. You're supposed to almost take a step back and in your mind have an, a reorientation, I'm reciting something that traveled across the seven heavens from Allah so I could read what He has to say or I could listen to what He has to tell me. Like there's a sense of appreciation. You know, like to give you an analogy, if you have some something at home, something sitting around at home, you don't even think twice about it. But if you see a new package unopened, right, and it's international wrapping and you can tell there's stamps like, it can't, whoa, what is this? What is that? Like you have this, this, this came from somewhere far. This must be really important. There's this delivery. The, that sense that this is not just something that's sitting around. This is something that came especially. So the month of Ramadan is as if we have to, every time Ramadan comes, we have to almost relive the coming down of the Qur'an. الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ Quran. It's remarkable to me also that in this ayah, Allah did not say uh, that He sent it down. He said the Qur'an was sent down. That's the last thing I'll share with you for today. That the Qur'an was sent down. Let me compare the English. If Allah were to say, Allah sent the Qur'an down. He mentioned Himself. Allah sent the Qur'an down. And if He says the Qur'an was sent down, then He didn't mention Himself. That's the passive form. The Qur'an was sent down. When, when the passive is used, you don't mention the doer. Meaning Allah is not mentioned. And the reason to do that in language is to focus on the object. The object becomes the subject. The object itself becomes the subject. So this is a way of highlighting the special awe we have to have of the Qur'an literally being sent down in this month. And that's captured also in the passive form, الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ So the first thing, first and foremost, when psychologically when we think of the coming of Ramadan, obviously we're thinking of fasting. Some people are thinking of, you know, shopping. Some people are thinking of cooking and, you know, iftars and socials and all this other stuff. These are the things that are associated with the month of Ramadan, all good. But you know what we lose sight of? Qur'an. And what we do with Qur'an, unfortunately, is that we reduce the Qur'an to just recitation in this month. Just listen to recitation or recite in this month. Both of those are extremely important. But the Qur'an didn't come to be recited. The Qur'an came to be understood. The Qur'an came with a message. The Qur'an didn't come for sounds. The Qur'an came for a message. So this is a month to connect not just with the sounds of the Qur'an, but more importantly, with the message of the Qur'an. So inshallah ta'ala from here, we'll go to the next phrase tomorrow night. Barakallahu li wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.